Yeah, I think, uh, well, one of the things for the audience that is frustrated with Kathy Wood's fund performance over time, that it is probably important to separate the quality of ARC's research from necessarily owning their funds. And we've done quite a number of Kathy Wood uh, reviews. Some people don't like it because they think that um, she's just never right and she's always wrong. If you follow her fund, it's been down for the last five years. But Elon continues to repeat at least three times saying that Kathy has got this right. So let's watch some of the clips and um, we'll respond to what she's saying here. You know, I would prefer to explain it and, you know, help, help show them some of the things I'm explaining to you um, so, so that they can see the merit in it. You know, so just to give you a sense on, yeah. on, on, on Tesla, how much, how much hatred <laughs> spewed yeah. out 2018, 2019, production hell, it's going bankrupt, you're idiots, you know? And a lot of that was for clickbait and, and we just didn't pay attention to it because we knew those people weren't doing the work. Uh, the people who are doing the work, they want to engage with us to understand why we think what we're thinking and like, how did you, even if they understand rights law, there's something that's not connecting. Uh, those are the people we really listen to because, and I can give you an example, um, in battery technology, uh, the, the semi-truck batteries, uh, Carnegie Mellon has a, a, a professor focusing only on batteries. That's all he does. He DM'd us. He DM'd Sam Chorus, who does all of our battery work, and said, I, I, I think you're wrong on this. I think, uh, and so they compared notes. And actually, Sam was half right or maybe all right, I don't know, but they, they morphed so that research on both sides was better. Think about that. That's a university professor. All he does is batteries. That's huge. Yeah, Tesla, how often do you speak to Elon Musk? You'd be surprised how little we do. I mean, we can, if we wanted to talk to him, we could talk to him, I think, almost any time. He knows we're not going to bother him unless there's something really important. You know, we have a five-year investment time horizon. We've put our Tesla model out for the public to see. And um, it's gratifying to have at the shareholders meeting to have Elon three times mention our research as being closest to what he believes the mark will be. So as long as we feel like we're on the right track, um, we're not going to be bothering Elon. We want him to use his brilliance on all of his companies. And many people do ask that question. So that's great. Um, what do you think about Kathy and what she just said? Yeah, I think, uh, well, one of the things for the audience that is frustrated with Kathy Wood's fund performance over time, that it is probably important to separate the quality of ARC's research from necessarily owning their funds. Um, that, you know, how you trade on Insight is kind of a whole different skill than being able to generate high quality research. And so I would fall in the camp of someone who I really love and have learned a lot from reading ARC's research on Tesla and a few other things, but Tesla probably above and beyond anything else over the years. Um, and the thing that she referenced there shortly, which is rights law, um, anyone who wants to invest in technology who does not understand rights law is doing themselves a huge disservice and they need to go back and they need to read everything that Brett Witten has written on the topic of rights law and really internalize that. Because if you don't understand what that is and you don't understand the dynamics that that forces in markets over time, um, then there's just a huge hole in your structural understanding of markets and technology. Um, there's also a lot of work done by Tony Siba and Rethink X that's really on this topic as well. They talk about it in terms of cost curves, but whatever your name for it is, you need to understand how a learning curve or how a technology uh, basically gets cheaper over time as more and more units are produced. And um, yeah, I, I loved ARC's research on that front. That said, um, you know, I personally am not an investor in ARC funds any longer. I did hold them for a brief period uh, in the late 
you know, 2010s, 2018, 2019, 2020. Um, but really got to the point where I wanted to make trades based on my own conviction at a higher level. And the, the big thing that washed me out as uh, a holder of their funds was the limitation that they have on allowing their high performers to run. So they have like a 10% cap that anytime a single company that they hold passes 10% of the total uh, holdings for that fund, then they start to sell it down. And I personally just think that that is a structural um, challenge that their funds face that makes it very hard for them to perform well over time. And so I, I disagree with the way that that's set up. And I understand there's you know reasons for that, that they're trying to market this as a diversified fund to a lot of people. But I think for retail shareholders, like if you if you have done the work to understand the high name, you know, or big name, high conviction stories that ARC is invested in, it's probably better for you to just own those stocks specifically instead of investing in their fund. Um, or at least that's, uh, well, I would say not financial advice. That is what I'm doing personally. So that said, they have been very, very spot on with their research on where this goes long term. I think that the the understanding of rights law is a big part of that. And I think that's why Elon has cited their research, because it does provide a good first principles understanding of where they are today and where they're going and specifically what are the most important technologies that they have to execute on in order to drive long-term huge outperformance by the stock um, relative to the rest of the market. So these are the technologies that ARK Invest um, thinks are disruptive technologies, right? So you got AI, the battery technology, blockchain, robotics, and gene sequencing. And so what she's saying is that actually, you know, Elon and Tesla and I think Tesla's doing is all, you know, most of these, like these, at least these three for sure, robotics, battery, and AI are the most disruptive technologies. He called, she called them the maestro of that. This is why, this is what she bets in and she's seeing the massive growth here. So it's going to take time for these disruptive technologies to happen. But when it does, it's going to be massive jumps. Almost all of these are big, big jumps, at least 10, 10x or more. So a big shout out to our friend, JC Christopher, who pointed this out to us, this video, this interview. Here are some really interesting comments from Kathy Wood on Elon Tesla, her analysis and how it's impacted her personally. Yeah, at the end, it's very moving uh, when she talks about her life. And uh, it's an interview between the Ice Coffee podcast, Graham Stevens, Jack Selby, short snippet I cut out that was focused on Elon and Tesla. The whole two hour interview was excellent. Check out their uh, podcast there. So let's take a look at more of what um, she said. That, that we're researching. He understands that the key to the new world is data, big data. And so he's generating data out of all of these companies. And one of the most surprising places, Neuralink, in the healthcare arena, they're generating all kinds of data about the brain. It, what, what are neural networks in AI? They're patterned after the brain. So, you know, he's got that data. He's got all the real world driving data from Tesla, you know, the 5 million robots roaming around the world who are sending data back every day on the corner cases. You look at X, that might be some of the most valuable data out there. And uh, Boring has transportation data. So he's getting data from all over the place. And, and of course, X, uh, XAI now would be another place that he's seeking to generate data. So he understands that the winner winners in the new world are going to have the best data, the most comprehensive data, the most reliable data. Okay, what's your thoughts, data? Well, it certainly has proven to be a huge uh, source of technology or technological growth recently and you know you see this in things like chat gbt and you know a number of other ai powered tools that um we have entered a new era where if you have enough data that you can train these artificial intelligence algorithms and they can do a lot of the work uh especially knowledge work that people have done in the past and she's right about his ability to 
architect a, a system of various businesses and business models that are all very good at generating this data. And so, you know, on the one hand, he has purchased X, that's obviously a huge source of data, um, but then he's getting lots of data from the cars uh, on Tesla through these computers and these cameras that are on all of the Teslas that have been manufactured since uh, what, going back to, I think, 20... 19 was when we first had hardware three, but even a lot of the older uh, vehicles were then retrofitted with hardware three. And this uh, setup allows them to just gather tons and tons of video data from driving scenarios all over the world. Um, and then, yeah, all, through Neuralink, we're getting better data on understanding how the brain itself works. And, um, you know, just all of his different businesses have their own unique angle of developing data. And he is able to, through that effort, um, really uh, drive forward new ways to combine this data and train new forms of AI algorithms. Um, and really excited to see what XAI is able to do. Uh, we've got Grok2 kind of coming up in uh, the very near future. They've said that it's basically you know done and just going through some final checks um, so if we can see huge progress in the performance of Grok 2 compared to their Grok 1 or Grok 1.5, and then extrapolate that out to the end of the year when they anticipate having Grok 3 out, and for Grok 3 to be something that is hopefully competitive, uh, according to Elon with ChatGPT, then you see an area where Elon is able to leverage all of this data to catch up very quickly to a leader in the space of AI, in open AI, um, and, and that ability to use that data and convert it into a valuable piece of software um, is something that will pay huge dividends in the long run to Elon Musk. I'm gonna play another clip that I played before, but I thought it's really cool. It's, this is Elon talking about the kinds of data that he, they're able to get and that the data that's going to come from the humanoid bot is going to be bigger, bigger than anything in the world. It's like going to be, it's like as much data as reality gets you and explains like the example of the, you know, bot pouring water into a cup. The bot can see this, can feel it, can hear, can uh, touch it. And that's data that Tesla can capture. So let's listen in. I think with Tesla and, and the real-time video coming from the several million cars, ultimately tens of millions of cars with Optimus, there might be hundreds of millions of Optimus robots, maybe billions, learning a tremendous amount from the real world. Uh, that's that's the, the biggest source of data, I think ultimately is, is sort of Optimus probably. Is, Optimus is gonna be the biggest source of data. Because it's able Because re to... reality scales. <laughs> <laughs> reality scales to the scale of reality. Um, <laughs> it's actually humbling to see how little data humans have actually been able to accumulate. Um, so really, if you say how many trillions of usable tokens have humans generated where on a non-duplicative, like discounting spam and repetitive stuff, it's not a huge number. You run out pretty quickly. And Optimus can go, so Tesla cars can, are unfortunately have to stay on the road. Uh, Optimus right. robot can go anywhere. And there's <laughs> yeah. more reality off the road. And go yeah, off road. I, I mean, like the Optimus robot can like pick up the cup and see did it pick up the cup in the right way? Did it? Yeah. You know, say you go pour water in the cup. You know, yeah. did the water go in the cup or not go in the cup? Did it spill water or not? Yeah. Um, simple stuff like that. I mean, but but it can do at that at scale, times a billion. You know, so generate use, useful data from reality. Yeah, that's a lot of data that this bot's going to do. So. When you have thousands, millions of bots out there that are capturing all the data, Tesla needs to create the largest data center in the world. This is their advantage combined with all the other data that they have. So amazing. absolutely. And okay. I would say on the LLM front, you know, one of the things he is referring to, or at least what I'm reading into his comments, is that he is saying that if you're just using the internet to train your AI algorithm, like ChatGPT is doing, like all of these different large language models that are really these frontier models they're just sucking up all of the publicly available data that they can on the internet and then sometimes even not publicly available um mm -hmm. stuff and but 
there is a limit to that. Like all these models have basically already done that. And so if you want more data that will give you new functionality that you don't already have, where do you get that? And that is his point about reality, that if you have robots that can interact with reality in real time, and then they can collect data in the form of whether it's video, whether it's audio, whether it's telemetry data on how it moved its body, all of these different things, um, those are new forms of data that are really not captured in any of the chat GPT type models yet in any meaningful way or scale. And so he's saying that there's basically a whole new frontier of useful data that we can acquire that will provide us with incredible new functionality. And um, yeah, I mean, humans, like we have basically written language is the way that we stored data over the long term for thousands and thousands of years. You know, there was right. no way right. to save video data from, you know, humans thousands of years ago. It, that was not a thing that existed. And so now that we have this ability to capture data about reality from these types of uh, data sources, then the value added things that you can do with that data in the future just really uh, is unprecedented.